1932, Australia launched what would soon become one of the most laughably notorious attempts at pest control. The Great Emu War, as it would come to be known, was a month-long campaign to take care of the mass destruction emus had caused to Australian agriculture, but would go down in history as a total failure. After the First World War, veterans across Australia began to take up farming, especially focusing on wheat. When the Great Depression began, wheat prices dropped dramatically. Additionally, emus in Western Australia found the farmland ideal, particularly due to the easily accessible water for irrigation. These compounded to cause a dire financial situation for the farmers. The farmers went to Sir George Pierce, the Minister of Defense, to request assistance in eliminating the nuisance. As many were veterans of the First World War, they understood the effectiveness of machine guns and requested their usage. The government readily agreed to send military forces armed with machine guns to kill the emus plaguing the farmers, as long as they would house the soldiers and pay for the ammunition. A detachment of three men from the Royal Australian Artillery armed with two Lewis guns were sent to Western Australia. Major G. P. W. Meredith, who commanded the group, Sergeant McMurray, and Gunner O'Halloran. The war was supposed to begin in late October of 1932, but was delayed until November 2nd due to the rain. A flock of roughly 50 emus was soon spotted, but they were out of range. Locals tried to herd the emus toward the soldiers, to little avail. After the first day, only a dozen or so emus had been killed. The men prepared to ambush the emus at point-blank range early the next day, but failed again when the guns jammed fairly early on. Over the next few days, the soldiers used trucks borrowed from the farmers to chase the emus down. This, too, did not end well. The roads were too bumpy for the guns to be accurate. On one of the last days of the first attempt, one truck attempted to run over an emu. The emu instead managed to get stuck in the truck's cab, hit the steering wheel, and drove the truck into a nearby fence. On November 8th, the soldiers were recalled. After the first attempt, an estimated 300 emus had been killed, although accounts range everywhere from 50 to 500, and 2,500 rounds of ammunition had been spent. The casualties on the side of Australians included the fence. On November 13th, the three men were sent back to continue their quest to eliminate the emus. For the next few weeks, they had better luck killing the emus. By Major Meredith's estimate, as of December 10th, they had killed 986 emus, but spent exactly 10 times as many rounds of ammunition. After hearing about this poor ratio, the Australian Parliament called off the war. The soldiers returned and the emus were considered the war's victors. A bounty system was instituted to try to get rid of the emus, with over 57,000 bounties claimed in the first six months. While the bounty system was generally effective, farmers requested military help three more times. They were, each time, denied. The emu war became a joke almost immediately. Contemporary media in Australia and in other countries poked fun at the Australian army for being defeated by the emus. Today, the war is just as much of a joke as ever being popularized in modern internet culture. Even so, the actual story of the war is lesser known. Yet, it almost makes the failure of a war even funnier. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Late Modern History for inside information, behind the scenes, and sneak peeks at upcoming videos. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. This is Matthew, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye, with a dear baby dear from your eye. Because the death to go, don't cry, don't die. There's a silver lining in the sky. But my old king, cheerio, chin chin, na boo, too, blue, goodbye.